YouTube Frogs! 4.2 is finally here, which means our favorite girl failure is finally out. The Hydro Archon Farina. Having one of the most unique and versatile kits of the entire Genshin roster, I am confident almost every player will enjoy how strong she is and how easy she is to use. In this video, we'll be covering all you need to know to use Farina effectively. From how our talent set works, constellations, how they impact your gameplay, optimal weapons and artifact loadouts, recommended stats to have, and versatility of team synergies available to her. Let's begin. Talents. So Farina's core gameplay revolves around her elemental skills summons. There are two forms of it, and you change forms with her charge attack. Her charge attack switches her Arca alignment at will between Usia and Numa, activating her the DPS and healing form of her E respectively. This charge attack is spammable and has no inherent cooldown, which is great for gameplay quality of life. This allows you to change her E form instantly, no matter where you are on the map, and resummon them where she is for a free reposition. While this is happening, your E button remains untouched, and so its only purpose is to refresh the duration. Now before we dive into the specifics of her elemental skill summons, let's cover her elemental burst which is responsible for buffing her E. Her elemental burst activates a team-wide buff indicated by these bubbles around your screen. The buff grants a damage bonus and incoming healing bonus to all party members including Farina herself depending on the number of fanfare stacks that Farina has. Fanfare stacks start at 0 at the cast of her burst and increase by 1 for every 1% HP change by each party member, change meaning gain or lost. As an example, if you have 4 Four party members starting at 60% HP at the start of her burst, healing everyone to full would be 40% HP gain times 4 or 160% HP which converts to 160 fanfare points. An ally losing 25% of their HP from getting hit would add 25 fanfare points to this, so on and so forth. These points cap at 300 and scale into a damage bonus and healing bonus buff at a pretty high conversion. At level 6, 300 points is 51% damage bonus and 18% healing bonus. To put this into perspective, 51% damage bonus from Farina is equivalent to a 1275 Elemental Mastery Kazuha transferring to allies with this Ascension 4 passive. To those newer to Genshin, a damage bonus buff like the one Farina provides is calculated in the same damage category as physical, elemental damage bonus, elemental skill or burst damage bonus, and normal charge plunging damage bonus. These bonuses do not affect transformative reactions like Bloom, Swirl, Overload, Electrocharge, etc., but do affect amplifying reactions like Melt and Vaporize, and additive reactions like Spread Aggravate. For the sake of simplicity, all you need to care about is, after you activate her burst, HP change gives your team damage bonus. Very simple. Now we've got her elemental skill summons. In Uzia form, she summons three Salon members, an octopus, a seahorse, and a crab. My attempt at their French names, I will say them only one time. Gentilhomme Usher, Surintendant Cheval Moron, Mademoiselle Crabaletta. These three deal damage in their separate intervals, Seahorse attacking the fastest with the lowest multiplier, Octopus attacking mid-speed with the middle multiplier, and the Crab attacking the slowest with the highest multiplier. Whenever any of them attack an opponent, and if any team allies are above 50% HP, they will increase their multiplier to 110 to 140% of the original value, and in turn sacrifice the HP of the said allies. This is basically the foundation of her kit strength. She steals your allies' HP to increase her Salon member damage. Due to this unique mechanic, your team allies now have access to 4-piece Mara Sussy set without needing built-in HP sacrificing abilities. Farina will do that for you as long as you maintain above 50% HP, which will be fulfilled assuming you run a proper Farina-oriented comp. Combined with her elemental burst providing a team buff based on gain or lost HP, her elemental skill summons will be doing very high consistent DPS as long as these conditions are met. And while her summons are doing very high consistent DPS, you can expect them on average to generate one Hydro Particle every 2.5 seconds. Now, because her summons have their own AI and have different attack speeds, Farina's general Hydro application is pretty complicated. To simplify for the average player, Farina's Hydro application is slower than the common meta choices. For example, Yelon or Xingqiu individual Hydro application is higher than Farina's. For this reason, if you choose to operate her on a Vaporize-oriented comp, you more often than not will need a double Hydro setup containing Farina plus one. Now, if you decide to use her charge attack and change her Arca alignment to Numa, she will instead summon Singer of Many Waters, which is purely an HP regenerating totem. It does not deal damage nor generate particles. When the totem is active, you will notice a ring of bubbles around the active character, indicating that you are in range of the totem to heal. If you happen to move out of range, the bubbles will disappear. They'll come back if you move back in range. The range is pretty large as indicated by this demonstration. 
use cases for her elemental skill forms. So you may think to yourself that the healing is strong. It's not actually that strong and it's also not AoE. So most of the time you're going to be on the Usia DPS form. You use this when you want damage output, you are okay with your team getting their HP consumed, and also you want particle generation. Secondarily, if you want to use the Numa healing form, this is most useful if you're doing overworld exploration and you want some extra healing, and also when you don't want the summons to attack random things and sacrifice your HP for no reason. And because Numa's healing totem is only for active characters and not party-wide off-field, it's not self-sufficient survivability for Farina's own kit. So don't treat Farina's Numa totem as a replacement for Kokomi's jellyfish. Besides the healing, the Numa totem lacks the particle generation and hydro application that the jellyfish has, which only exists for her Uzia summons. Passive Talents A1 Passive A very small amount of healing to a party member if your active character is being overhealed. Most of the time, you probably won't notice this, so it's basically a moot passive. A4 Passive A little extra damage bonus for her salon members. 40,000 HP Farina means 28% damage bonus to her salon members. Alright, so that's baseline kit discussion. Let's go over a bit of gameplay, because you may have noticed I did not mention the duration or the cooldown of her abilities when breaking down her talents. So her elemental skill summon duration is 30 seconds, pretty long. While the cooldown is 20 seconds for 100% uptime, her ultimate duration is 18 seconds, while its cooldown is 15 seconds, which is also 100% uptime, but the entirety of it is shorter than her elemental skill summon duration. So, gameplay-wise, Farina is super simple. You basically E into your Q every 20 to 25 seconds. It honestly depends on your team's rotation and your team's energy uptime. She'll summon her salon members, and then immediately after, she'll activate her Q to start stacking fanfare. Stacking a fanfare quickly depends depends on your team's initial HP. You'll notice after playing with Farina, salon members will very easily cut your team's HP universally down to 50% while you don't have any active healing happening. So this is basically the default form of your team comp. It rotates starting with your team at 50% HP. This means that right after Farina's EQ, your AoE burst healer ideally goes right after to full heal the team. This will immediately grant 200 fanfare stacks out of 300 cap, 50 for each of the four party members. Then you'll naturally reach 300 fanfare with her salon members slowly decreasing your team's HP again and or the active characters who can self-sacrifice their HP. This is ideal team situation where you'll have the highest uptime for fanfare stacks to grant your whole team a nice large damage bonus buff for a very long time. Just as an example, if we include Jean with Farina, who now has one of the best synergies with her, Jean Q right after Farina EQ setup provides a surge of team healing and also will leave behind her field that will continuously heal the active character. Obviously, in order to pull this off each rotation, energy recharge is a must-have for Farina herself and whoever's healing right after. This will maintain a constant fanfare buff across the team while Farina's summons are dealing very high consistent DPS at the cost of your team's HP. Once you are done clearing most of the enemy, and preparing for the next wave with a clean rotation, this is the perfect time to switch Farina's Arca alignment and summon her healing totem if any of your characters is dangerously low, especially below 50% HP. Her E duration is 100% uptime, and changing it is literally free with her charge attack, so you want to use this to your advantage when micromanaging which E form you want. Overall, her gameplay is actually pretty easy, despite her kit details, multipliers, application, and theory crafting being complex. She's the pinnacle of AFK impact. She EQs and then can leave if she wants. Fanfare will continue to stack, and her summons will still do damage, being more accurate where she lets everyone else do the job for her. Talent priority. Max out the skill and burst, ignore the normal charge attack. Even though her skill contains her base multipliers, burst contains a really well scaling damage bonus buff that benefits not only herself, but her entire team. At level 1, it starts at 21% all the way to 75% at level 10. And if you have Constellations, Constellation 1 increases level 10 from 75% to 100% because the fanfare cap is 400, and then C3 caps it out at 123% at level 13. For this reason, our highest priority is burst over skill, but you should realistically cap both of them out. That brings us to our next section, Lady Farina's Constellations. I think probably a decent number of people are considering maybe the early Constellations, so we're covering early in the vid right after her talents. C1. Activating her burst now starts at 150 fanfare instead of 0, and the cap increases from 300 to 400. This basically increases the average buff that her burst grants and also removes the necessity of having full team heal right after her EQ setup. However, I'd still recommend her rotation stay the same, because synergizing Farina with your healer will now grant 350 50 out of 400 stacks immediately rather than 200 out of 300 which caps your buff earlier. C2. 
Fanfare stacks increase from 1 to 1% 1 HP to 3.5 to 1% HP. Excess stacks above 400 increase Farina's own max HP at a conversion of 100 stacks to 35% HP. This caps at 400 extra stacks to 140% Farina HP. This one is a pretty significant change riding off of C1. A typical rotation leading with 200 fanfare stacks, 50 from each party member now increases to 700 fanfare stacks, 175 from each party member healed from 50% to 100%. If you combine this with a C1 start of 150 stacks, she's at 850 out of 400, which not only immediately caps her buff, but also gives 450 excess, which immediately caps Farina's HP bonus at 140%. Pretty insane. With C2, I would say it's mandatory to keep the Farina plus healer synergy because without it you would lose these 700 initial stacks which would basically remove the buff and would not give farina extra hp c3 c5 plus three levels to her burst and her skill which are her most important scaling abilities and then c4 as long as her e is dealing damage or healing the active character farina gains free energy every five seconds over the course of a 20 to 25 second rotation this gives a 16 to 20 free energy which effectively reduces her burst cost to 40 to 44. c6 this is a huge fat essay that basically says Farina gets extra strong normal charged plunging attacks when she initially casts her elemental skill. The concept is very similar to Yell on C6, except it's not burst activated. Her normal charge plunging attacks gain Hydro Infusion and 18% max HP scaling. In Usia form, which is her DPS summons, her normal attack heals the entire party for 4% of Farina's max HP every second. In Numa form, which is her healing totem, her normal attack gains an extra 25% max HP scaling and consumes 1% of all allies' HP. So essentially, she gains the opposite of what her summon have and evens out the healing. If her summons are DPS, then her attacks heal. If her healing totem is out, then she deals extra damage. Note that because her enhanced normal charge attacks are now tied to her skill and not burst, on-field main DPS Farina rotation modifies slightly to start with her burst to stack fanfare and then use her skill right before you intend to blast with her six auto attacks. So most of you who will even consider constellations are maybe only looking to C2, maybe C3, if you're adventurous for her burst levels. Those early constellations are quite a nice boost to her burst buff amount, which benefits the entire team. Weapons. So, any veteran YouTube Frost who played way back in version 1.2 and remember the event with the big fat cryo Regisfine? Well, nearly three years later, the good old Festering Desire returns as one of the best four-star weapons, let alone purely F2P weapons for Farina. A beautiful mixture of energy recharge secondary stat, elemental skill damage, and elemental skill crit rate on its passive. Now, let's also take a peek at her signature weapon, Splendor of Tranquil Waters. The base attack does not matter. Secondary, 88% crit damage, nothing too surprising for recent weapons. Passive Active character HP change means elemental skill damage increase. Party member HP change means the active character gains more HP. Both passives very easy for Farina to proc, best in slot for her personal damage. However, this weapon does lack recharge and this is a big point. This signature weapon scales better alongside good stats from your artifacts and the more optimal your team weapon stats and synergies are. All of those things affect how much recharge your Farina needs, and the less she needs because your setup is better, the stronger her signature weapon is. For this reason, a majority of the 5-star crit stat sticks are just okay. Lo-Fi, Harin, Miss Splitter are in this category. Jade Cutter is slightly better because high crit rate, is easy to build with, and it also has an HP passive. Nilu's signature Key of Kajna suit is very similar to her signature weapon. It's better if your team setup is optimal. The team setup for the key is the more the team uses the Elemental Mastery, and if Farina herself is sufficient on the recharge, the better the weapon is. For Skyward Blade, yes it does have recharge, but no it has no other useful stat. Don't recommend it. 4-star weapons beside Festering Desire, most of these weapons that are decently useful aim to grant her lots of recharge, and if not that, then at least something from elemental skill damage, elemental skill crit rate, or HP percent. So, we have Favonius. It's really good. If you're a newer player and you don't have Festering Desire, you have maybe R3 or higher Favage. It's very good to use. Useful recharge for herself, but the particle generation is also really useful for her team, especially if your healer who's going right after her is starving for energy and really easy to maintain because she just pops on field, her summons crit, or she crits from an auto, and it procs. Fleuve Centre. F2P from Fontaine Fishing Association it has ER secondary stat, its passive grants elemental skill crit rate, and extra recharge after her elemental skill usage. Basically, it's a budget festering desire that does not have elemental skill damage. Wolfing from the Battle Pass. 
So this weapon lacks recharge, but it grants base crit rate, elemental skill crit rate, and elemental skill damage. So it's a strong purely DPS choice, but you have to play around the lack of recharge similar to the 5 star weapons. And finally, Sapwood Blade. So this weapon is pretty last resort. I would only use it if you already massively invested into it because the other four star and five star options that were mentioned generally provide more than this weapon does. Artifacts. So have you been farming the Fontaine domain? Well, if you haven't, but you have Farina now, now you are. She'll use the Golden Troop and then any DPS you pair with Farina, or if you recently pulled any of the Fontaine limited characters, they will use the Mara Sussy set. So a two for one deal where you farm a dungeon for more than one character, it sounds pretty good. Unfortunately, other 4P sets are not nearly as good and I would consider only as stepping stones or temporary builds before Golden Troop. We had Voru Kasha's Glow, which on paper looks pretty decent, but after testing, the HP drain from her elemental skill summons when they attack does not count as her specifically taking damage for the 4P set, so it doesn't proc. Otherwise, this would have been pretty good because you get 20% HP and you get skill and burst damage. So yeah. If you purely want supportive Farina, 4P's tenacity works perfectly. She'll have 100% uptime on its passive and she gains from the 2P's HP%. Percent. Besides that, any 2P's 2P's combination of HP% percent, Hydro Damage bonus, Elemental Skill Damage bonus will be used temporarily until you finish or get a golden troop four piece for my whales out there c6 farina doubles as both the support and an on-field dps so her build now can add the four piece mara Sussi set as a possible choice alongside golden troop golden troop will still grant her summons the most damage but if you want to show off her c6 normal charge attacks four piece mara Sussi is best in slot main stats so usually an hp scaling hydro dps operates on an hp timepiece hydro goblet and crit layout this is still good for farina but if you have golden troop on top of her burst buff, she'll already be almost 140 to 150% damage bonus without artifacts. So for Farina in particular, HP Goblet is actually better to round out her stats. This changes though if you are a Constellation 2 or higher, because she gets 140% HP basically for free if you're playing Optimal Farina plus Healer combo to get max fanfare stacks, which then changes back to Hydro Goblet as most efficient. So in general, she has the following builds. If you're C0 or C1, then HP HP crit or ER HP crit. The timepiece is flexible. It really depends on how much ER you need. If you're C2 or higher, you switch the goblet and both of those builds to hydro because her C2 grants her a lot of HP percent. So again, timepiece is flexible if you need the energy recharge. At constellation four, you don't need the ER timepiece anymore. Her burst cost becomes really manageable with substats and team particle generation, and the effective cost is like 40 to 44, so it's pretty low. Now, you may be thinking her signature weapon grants 88% crit damage, so usually when a weapon like that exists, you can possibly run a non-crit mask like HP%. Percent. In Farina's case, weirdly enough, crit is still her most lacking stat, even if you use that weapon. The more you invest in Farina, whether it's talent levels or constellations, the more damage bonus she gets from her burst level scaling and HP. HP she gets from Double Hydro, Artifacts, Constellation 2, etc. So Crit Mask is optimal for her. Most likely for her crit rate, try to push her into the 70, 80, or 90% range, which is possible because she has crit rate ascension stat. The damage bonus you'll get from Golden Troop, you'll get from her burst buff, possibly the goblet if you're C2+, plus, and possibly from your Nemo character who transfers stats. HP percent will come from your timepiece, Constellation 2, Double Hydro, maybe Goblet. And so then we get to recommended stats. Minimum expectations, level 90 out of 90, and 166 talents. Her base HP is 15.3k, so typical builds should be hovering around 35 to 40,000 HP without Double Hydro. Double Hydro will usually get you to 40,000 HP and above. This is assuming an artifact layout of HP HP crit. If you are a Hydro Goblet, your HP will probably crash to around 30 to 35,000 HP. Crit rate, 70 to 90% is optimal since she's got crit rate ascension stat. If you run Festering Desire or a similar weapon that grants elemental skill crit rate, then 60% base is acceptable because the weapon will push it to 70 plus. Crit damage, this is as high as you can get it as long as crit rate is 70 plus. Usually this will be 150 to 200 plus percent. And then energy recharge is really broad spectrum depending on your playstyle. The absolute minimum that Freena can run is like a 
120%, which assumes Mono Hydro, at least one Favonius, optionally Constellation 4, some Particle Funneling, etc. Expensive Freeness can easily push 200%, which is something like 100% off field, Solo Hydro, 0 to 1 Favonius, Constellation 0, no Particle Funneling, etc. Now, this is definitely her first priority stat, though, so that you can EQ every 20 to 25 seconds, but the range is so wide that it depends. The average player should be comfortable with 160% as a 60 energy cost burst user. This is very easy to achieve with Favonius or Festering Desire weapon users. If you are not in this category, an energy recharge timepiece may be necessary for at least 51.8%. After that, Hydro Damage percent in the stat page can be ignored. Golden Troop, her burst buff, and also her Ascension 4 talent do not show here, so you can't tell from just the stats. Team Comps because Farina combines 100% off-field DPS and also has an insane team-wide damage buff, her team synergies are probably the most broad of all characters released thus far. And as a Hydro character, her element is the most easily connected to others for general reactions. This is a huge positive, as it means she gains the most versatile lineup and is lore accurate to her being the absolute center of attention. In order to gain 100% of Farina's strength though, we do need a proper full team healer that can balance Farina's HP drain and grant her those fanfare stacks. While going through team comps, each archetype and team setup will have a proper healer to go along with it. Not all healers will be mentioned, so here are some interchangeable choices that are very similar in design to help cover all bases. Yao Yao and Baiju are both Dendro healers, Jean and Sayu are both Nemo healers, Mika and Charlotte are both Cryo healers, which in my opinion are more useful than Diona, Nakomi is way more value than Barbara, but they are both Hydro healers. Now, healers that aren't perfect for Farina but work under specific conditions include all prototype Amber users, Catalyst users, Bennett, and then Dory Cookie. So first up, we've got Bloom-oriented comps. Farina's own Hydra application is lower than Yellen or Xingqiu's, so Bloom archetypes will be split between a Hyper Bloom Virgin and a Quick Bloom. Adding a second Hydro with Farina will result in Hyper Bloom Virgin-oriented comps, whereas only using solo Hydro Farina will result in Quicken Bloom comps, with a fourth slot available for a second Electro or Dendro DPS. For Hyper Bloom Virgin, we're looking at these setups. Farina plus Kokomi plus Dendro plus Electro Pyro with Kokomi on field. Or Farina plus Xingqiu Yelan plus Yao Yao Baiju plus Electro Pyro with Yao Yao Baiju or Yelan being on field. Farina doesn't inherently buff Bloom, so the Hyper Bloom damage itself remains the same. In Quick Bloom, Farina's burst buff can be utilized by your Electro Dendro sub DPS alongside the Hyper Blooms. For these comps, typical setups will involve Farina plus Yao Yao Baiju plus Electro and then your double Dendro or Electro DPS. In the Quick Bloom setup, it's more difficult to swap the healer from Yao Yao Baiju to Cookie to open up a slot for Nahida since Cookie's healing is only for the active character and not for the full team. When trying out these team comps, both Yaya's burst healing and prototype Amber Baiju's consistent healing are very, very effective. But personally, I have found Baiju a bit easier to play. And of course, fans of Nilu Bloom also have another option to play around with. Unfortunately, Farina does not have any special synergy with Nilu Bloom, so including her in the composition does not improve its damage output. If running Farina Nilu Bloom, you are restricted to either Triple Hydro with Kokomi or using a Yao Yao Baiju. Otherwise, the composition behaves as it normally does with no changes. Vape Comps most common autopilot vaporized teams will require a double hydro setup to maintain full vaporizes for the pyro DPS. Solo Hydro Farina will only effectively vape about half the hits since her hydro application is lower than common solo hydro units like Shincho or Yelan, so it becomes more beneficial to pair them together and let Farina boost the second hydro DPS as well. For this reason, most vape teams will stick to Hyro DPS plus Farina plus a second Hydro and the healer. The healer will most commonly be Jean or Mika depending on how much time the Pyro DPS spends on field. The longer the on field, the more Mika is preferred because his healing is not restricted to circle impact, whereas Jean does require the active character to stay within her field. Jean will definitely be a higher DPS choice due to her ability to run Beardus and Venerer and Swirl either just Hydro for both Farina and the second Hydro, or a double Swirl Pyro and Hydro depending on the Pyro DPS. This is the safest lineup for Vape Team Comps where you don't have to think too much about your Hydro application and whether your carry is vaporizing. A little more focus will be required if you want to deviate from this lineup. For example, changing Jean to Kazawa opens up something a little different. Pyro DPS plus Farina plus Kazawa Burst plus Kokomi, Shinsho, Yelan, or Bennett is potentially a more aggressive lineup. Kokomi is the safest choice, with double Hydro and off-field and on-field healing, but this makes your team all 5 stars, so it might not be easy to achieve. Shinsho or Yelan remove team-wide healing altogether, but give your Pyro DPS more damage. Bennett heals only the Pyro DPS, but has no special synergy with Farina. 
If the fight doesn't last that long, Bennett-oriented comps can take advantage of their more front-loaded damage to quick clear. After some testing, I actually found Klee to be pretty nice with Farina and a relatively protective setup. With 4-piece Mara Sassi Klee and 100% recharge, she was still able to almost fully rotate her kit with Ys. 4-piece Mara Sassi enables her to reach 100% crit rate with 200% crit damage easily, and while obviously this damage is less impressive than for example a Hu Tao, still does way better than originally anticipated. And of course, how can we forget another classic who gains a new comp with Farina's addition, Xiangling. In a Xiangling Farina oriented composition, our focus is not to reverse vape with Xiangling, but rather the damage bonuses stack for Xiangling and allow Farina to slowly vape with her off field summons. In this composition, we double up with two healers using Sunfire Jean and add Farina Xiangling to the picture. Jean Bennett setup circle impact with both their fields on the ground. Jean holds Viridus and Venerer. Bennett and Farina buff Xiangling. Xiangling does very high raw pyro damage, and then Farina vaporizes with her summons. This is of course not stronger than the old national composition, but if you're bored of that, Xiangling's got you covered with this comp. All right, now let's get into Mono Hydro. We've still got flexible options even within this archetype, which I would consider usually to just be one and done. The healer in this comp can be one of the following. Kokomi for Hydro, Jean for Animo, Noel for Geo, and Nivellette is a special case, and of course, Farina herself if she is C6. Obviously, that last option is not for most of you guys, but it does exist and is its own team comp building archetype because Farina C6 solves her own healing issue and you no longer need a separate character to pair with her. From these choices, Kokomi Farina Mono Hydro usually would use an Animo like Kazuo Venti and a third Hydro like Yelan or Xingqiu or Nivellette. Jean Farina Mono Hydro adds Yelan and Xingqiu for a second and third. Nivellette is kind of awkward because he doesn't synergize with Yelan or Xingqiu that well. In this comp, you can sit on Jean or Yelan and just auto, or quick swap, or have yell on C6 main DPS. My personal experiences have found on field Jean to have excellent results with her low cooldown spammable E. Noel Farina Mono Hydro. This team, you add Yelan Qingqiu, and you have the Geo Queen back in action. I've tried both Redhorn and Favonius, and while Redhorn's damage is astronomically higher, Favonius' energy generation makes for perfect off-cooldown rotations. Up to you to decide what you value more for her. The triple Hydro Noel lineup is much more single target focused, and completely autopilot allowing for a laid-back playstyle. You can choose to swap Qingqiu or Yelan or both for Goro and Albedo to improve its AoE, activate Geo Resonance, and also buff Noel's defense. This double Geo, double Hydro Janitor lineup is much more effective against groups of enemies, or running triple Geo with one Farina is also very nice. Nivellet Farina Mono Hydro. This team, Nivellet can heal himself pretty easily, and this is the only team that uses Farina's Ascension 1 passive pretty effectively to trickle down some HP to your off-field party members, and with Prototype Amber, he can act as that AoE team heal by himself. In this lineup, Yelan and Xingqiu lack synergy, and also Nivellet likes to have some protection against knockback, unless you have Constellation 1, so Johnny can chill here alongside someone like Kazuha. If Farina herself is C6, she becomes a menacing DPS on her own, and you can build around her like a typical hyper carry. For the highest DPS output, pairing her with Yelan for passive damage ramp up, Kazuha for shred and even more damage bonus, and Zhongli for res reduction will be the strongest option. Alternatively, if you don't want to use Yelan here, you can also use Mona for her omen buff. Otherwise, you can just run whatever Mono Hydro setup from Xingqiu, Yelan, Kazuo, or Venti that you need, destroying everything and healing everyone at the same time. Freeze comps. So Freeze hasn't really changed its team comp design since like ever. Usually it's two Cryo plus one Hydro plus one Anemo. The strongest of which is currently Ayaka, Kokomi, Shenha, and Kazuo. Farina slots in where Kokomi is and that changes Kazuo to Jean. That's the base lineup. And then everything can work around like this. Remove Jean, then you'd run Mika, Charlotte, or Diona, the second Cryo healer, if you still want Kazuo in that team. For the most part, it's a pretty flexible lineup that if you add Farina, you either add a Cryo or a Nemo healer and then fill the rest of the slots. Damage output of these teams is pretty good. Farina replaces Kazuo with Swirl Damage Boost to your team and instead gives a bonus to everyone as long as fanfare stacks are there. She also does pretty nice damage herself and is completely off field, also quick swappable, and you can reposition her summons with her charge attack whenever you want. Easy. Cryo DPS that make use of her team comms include Freeze Ganyu, Ayaka, Chongyun plus relevant Cryo DPS, Grizzly, and even Aloy if you want. In these teams, do remember that Kazuo is really important for CC and grouping, and if you decide to use Farina and Jean, they don't have that inherent grouping like Kazuo does. 
Before we leave the cryo units, one very quick mention of a more complex Rizzly comp that makes use of burn melt and vaporize all in one. It consists of cryo plus dendro plus pyro plus farina, just the hydro, and works due to farina's lower hydro application, which allows burn to persist, farina to vaporize, and Risley to reverse melt. Usually the full comp consists of Risley, which is your on-field cryo, plus Baiju, which is your dendro applier and healer, Changling, which is off-field pyro, and Farina, which is off-field hydro and your team buffer. If you want more details, I'd invite you to consult Sajef77, who is the theory crafter behind this team. Lastly, I want to talk about hyper carry comps. These teams involve setups around characters like Xiao, Wanderer, Sino, and similar 10 second plus on field characters. These teams are pretty case by case. It really depends on how optimal the team comp is. Quick Bloom on field carries like Sino and I'll hate them before well enough with optimal weapons and decent recharge. These team B compositions follow the Quick Bloom setup with Farina as Hydro, two Dendro or two Electro, and then one of the corresponding element. So it's either going to be one Dendro, two Electro, or two Dendro, one Electro. Xiao or Wanderer also do fairly solid, assuming you have C6 Faraz on and Mika or Cookie well invested. These are not as flexible and are definitely more enemy dependent than other teams that allow your on-field to actually do damage. Wanderer suffers extremely heavily from knockback problems, because usually in a Farina comp, he won't have an easy shield access because all the slots are taken up. Xiao is very likely going to be on life support most of the time, because not only does he drain his own HP, but Farina will also drain his HP when it's above 50%, so unless your healer is giga juiced, your Xiao is likely going to be sub 50% HP most of the fight. I would only suggest you run hyper carry comps if you have the optimal team for it. This, for example, means C6 Farazon for Anemo characters, Baiju for Quick Bloom, High Recharge Farina, and relatively optimal weapons or Favonius for their weapons. Ooh, I think that should cover an extensive amount of information on Farina. I have been having so much fun testing all of these comps out for Farina, and I think she is one of the most well designed units that we've had in a while. She holds an immense amount of team utility and buffing power comparable to extremely powerful supports like Kazuha, and deals an impressive amount of off-field damage both at 100% uptime, but not without a downside of draining your team's HP. I think it's totally fair for her kit to have a cost, which gives rise to previously underused characters such as Jean, a shining platform to truly change the scene. If you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something, I'd appreciate if you liked the video and maybe shared it with your friends and fellow Farina owners so they can master her kit. As always, thank you guys for watching, good luck on getting Farina, and we'll see you next time. Take care.